the European Space Agency together with Airbus Space and Defense are set to make history with the Lunar Earth flyby today on August 19 and August 20, so tomorrow, 2024. With this maneuver, which is a double gravity assist, will slow down the Jewish spacecraft, altering its trajectory for a journey to Venus and then Jupiter, its final destination. Welcome back on the Space Info Podcast. Here we talk about space and everything related to it. If you are passionate about space, astronomy, technology and everything about it, you can join all our social platforms at the Space Info Club or our website at www.spaceinfo.club where tons of content and a community of experts are there waiting for you. This is the Space Info Club. Welcome back on the Space Info podcast and on the Space Info channel. So today we talk about JUICE, which is the European Space Agency Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, a spacecraft unmanned for sure, uh, whose final destination is uh, Jupiter, in particular its uh, icy moons. Uh, three of them I'll, I'll reveal but I, I know that you already know which of them are I, I'll talk about them a little bit later so uh, let's talk about the presentation well and in particular the, the event which is going to occur between today and tomorrow so as said in, into the introduction uh, August 2024 19 and 20 so uh, this is uh, when the, the flyby uh, bit, uh, with Earth and our natural satellite, which is the Moon, I hope that you know this, uh, will occur. So what is a gravity assist and uh, why is it important? Well, this maneuver is critical for Jewish to align its path toward Jupiter, which is the final destination of the mission, enabling the spacecraft to reach the correct orbit. So precise navigation is crucial, as any error during this flyby could jeopardize the whole mission. Indeed, it is a very delicate operation. Uh, you have to imagine that uh, you are traveling into space with an unmanned spacecraft uh, with limited input from the external, external which is the ground control so uh, you are in a completely i, I would use the, the word completely uh, 3d environment but what do i mean well uh, we are used to work on our planet as uh, human beings or maybe we are used to drive our car or we are used to fly a plane maybe some of us uh, so if you are flying you're quite close to this experience but not so close because aerodynamics and gravity are uh, particularly gravity are affecting our common experience of uh, how a 3d world actually works well uh, in space things uh, don't work differently for sure uh, law, the laws of physics are the same but you have to think that this spacecraft is like a very little little uh, ball flying around a much bigger one which is a planet in this case and the flyby will use the gravitational attraction of this planet uh, with respect to the spacecraft uh, in order to modify its trajectory and uh, it is like uh, you are using uh, an external energy with respect to the spacecraft uh, in order to modify the trajectory and uh, this modification of trajectory can happen in uh, the three dimensions so uh, let's think about a, a plane table and you are uh, running your little ball uh, on that plane then an external forces brings this ball uh, towards in a di completely different direction modifying the trajectory this is something like that happens with the gravity assist and uh, this is one of the characteristics and one of the reasons why they are so important and uh, well they are also important well this is the effect of uh, the gravity assist so a, modif a modification in the trajectory but uh, why do we still and we uh, want to use gravity assist uh, into, a into a mission well this won't be the first this is not the first and it won't be for sure the last gravity assist in the uh, history of uh, unmanned and also manned uh, space missions well they're very important because they allow the spacecraft uh, to save a lot of propellant on board well you actually are not using if not for very very slight and minor correction of your trajectory you are not using any kind of propellant but you are using let's say the natural gravitational force 
of an external item, in this case the Earth or the Moon or both, which influence the trajectory of your spacecraft and modify it in the way that you hope, I would say, but or a better word would be that you calculated in order to reorient the trajectory of the spacecraft towards a final destination or an intermediate one, for example. Uh, in this case, uh, the spacecraft will, won't be di directed directly towards uh, Jupiter, but uh, will face uh, some other minor corrections, some other flybys, because I remember, I, I want to remember to you that, the, uh, let's say, the arrival date, we will see uh, more in detail later, it's around 2030, so we, ha we still have something like six years uh, of flight uh, into deep space before uh, reaching the final destination. So, answer to this question. Why is flyby important? For two reasons. Because it's critical, you need a lot of precision, the input condition, the way you face and you inject the spacecraft into the flyby will affect a lot, will completely affect the way it will come out of this maneuver and so the, the final trajectory out of the flyby. Second reason, to save propellant. So you can save a lot of propellant uh, thanks to the flyby because basically you are using uh, no propellant but you're using the gravitational attraction of an external item which is a planet uh, or a satellite or something. Uh, and when I say satellite I mean for sure natural satellites like our moon. So just uh, some details about the mission, Drew's mission. Uh, so. Drew spacecraft will travel approximately something like 600 million kilometers to reach Jupiter in eight years. So, uh, as I was saying, it was launched one year ago, 2023. Uh, I remember to you that uh, you can also subscribe to this channel or visit our website where you can find all the material and the, the information of the launch of the mission and some other details. And I would like to underline that we'll keep publishing details about the mission. So if you want to stay updated, just follow us or subscribe for free to our website and uh, our socials. Uh, so, in, 2020, in 2030, 2031, approximately, uh, the spacecraft will reach its final destination. So, the mission will include the gravity assist from Earth, like in this case, then from Mars, and also Venus uh, to gain speed. Well, uh, the, I don't remember the precise order and how many times uh, uh, the spacecraft will fly by to, uh, with respect to this planet. Uh, don't forget that the center of the orbit, especially at the beginning, but also uh, well, the, the center of the orbit is, alwa is always uh, a point between the final destination and the sun, which is the, the, the major gravity, uh, let's say, actor in the whole mission, which is 99% and something more of the whole mass of the solar system. So. Uh, that's for sure very important uh, for the gravitational attraction of the whole system and uh, yeah so multiple flybys uh, but the dynamics of the thing will be uh, very similar to this one so uh, some insights well the first 2.5 years at Jupiter will involve about 30 flybys of Ganymede, Callisto and Europa so which is the difference between these flybys, which are the, the main topic of today's video, uh, and the one which will, will occur between today and tomorrow uh, in, uh, around Earth and the Moon? Well, uh, today's flyby will be used to save propellant and to reach the final destination, so to orient the spacecraft with its trajectory towards Jupiter and its moons. The flybys that you are seeing here will be used to observe, to better observe and capture details of Jupiter's moon. So uh, they are basically the same thing. The physics around the, the flyby is the very same, no difference, no difference, but the scope of the flybys will be different. So in that case, uh, I, I still don't, I, I haven't studied yet precisely the physics of uh, those flybys, so I don't have yet uh, the orbital parameters and much more details about those flybys. But, uh, and I also think that uh, some correction will be anyway performed by mission control, but uh, those flybys in the future will be used to keep the spacecraft as close as possible or in the optimal trajectory with respect to what scientists need. So uh, maybe you need some kind of some 
precise inclination with respect to the surface, uh, some distance uh, from the surface or, or uh, some precise orb orbital parameters. Again, uh, you use the flybys instead of, uh, let's say, pure propellant uh, uh, to correct the spacecraft and to optimize the whole mission. Don't forget that uh, the amount of propellant uh, is limited. So uh, any kind of correction, uh, think about this. When you are in space, uh, both accelerating and braking uh, with respect to some reference point uh, are expressed in terms of propellant. So uh, when you're driving, uh, you push on your throttle and you spend the propellant from your car. And then when you brake, you push on the brake, but no propellant is spent. In space, things are a little different. You have to think about uh, that any correction you make uh, is expressed in terms of propellant. There is no uh, preferred direction in terms of uh, acceleration, but any kind of acceleration or deceleration is calculated because actually is uh, in terms of propellant. So the less correction you can make with your own propellant, you can optimize the whole spacecraft life. And this is also the reason why a lot of missions in the past and in the present are very successful because a lot of propellant was saved instead of spent, let's say, useless. So again, other insights from the mission uh, and one of them will be uh, the final year, which will be, let's say, the climax of the whole mission with uh, uh, the focus on orbiting Ganymede for in-depth study. Well, what you can see here, if you're looking at the video, is an uh, infrared image, uh, thanks, to, thanks to NASA, of Ganymede, which is again a moon of Jupiter. And uh, we, we still very little know about the moons of Jupiter. Uh, we know that they are icy, but we, uh, we don't have much more details in this sense. So, uh, as I said, also from the, the moon, the, the name of the mission, which is Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, Juice, uh, that's the, the main scope of the mission itself. So, uh, again, the mission aims to investigate uh, potential surface oceans on these moons or maybe subsurface oceans. Indeed, uh, physics uh, is the same on the moons than here on Earth, but since uh, pressure and temperature are kind of different, uh, well, different phenomena can, uh, can be expressed on these uh, celestial bodies uh, that we still don't know. And so, thanks to JUICE, well, a lot of uh, interesting things will be re revealed to the to humanity and i want to underline a key player in this mission which is airbus space and defense together with the european space agency well airbus with its space and defense division signed as prime contractor in 2015 and has led a consortium of more than 80 companies during the course of the project the company was selected by the European Space Agency as the prime contractor for the design, development and also production and testing of this new spacecraft with a revolutionary mission, which is, as said, well, exploring Jupiter's icy moon. So thanks to this uh, company, Airbus, now we have a, a fantastic spacecraft in space, uh, which will perform uh, a flyby with respect to our planet uh, tonight between today and tomorrow so uh, well what I've said up to now seems very straightforward uh, I wouldn't say simple but uh, uh, something that uh, we have already exper experiences in the past well when missions were designed a lot of flybys were already performed so nothing new well uh, I would say that there are some challenges in this mission and one of them is Jupiter's cold environment which poses well uh, some uh, precautions and also warnings in terms of uh, uh, energy collection. Well, I would say that uh, uh, extreme temperature variation are a significant challenge for the spacecraft. Maybe you are thinking about, okay, but the spacecraft will be flying uh, in space, so uh, this won't affect act, act very much the, the spacecraft. Well, this is not true because uh, you have to think about flybys uh, as um, 
as a, a process, as a maneuver, which poses the spacecraft very close to the surface of the planet or the satellite or the celestial body more in general, to which you are performing this maneuver with respect to. So if the temperature is very low, and with very low, I, I mean something like 100, 150 degrees below zero on the Celsius scale, so which is something like 100, 120 uh, in terms of uh, degrees Kelvin, so absolute temperature, which is very low actually. So if your spacecraft is performing a maneuver in the range of this temperature, well, uh, it will be affected by also this challenge. And you will also have to think about uh, uh, this temperature in terms of uh, scientific parameters uh, if you have uh, and if you want to observe the surface uh, with some kind of instruments. So what's on board the spacecraft? Well, just we carry up, uh, up to, we carry actually is carrying now 10 scientific instruments for various observation. And the spacecraft also must minimize the electromagnetic emissions to ensure that accurate data are collected. And that's why engineers have developed a special technique to reduce the electromagnetic interference. What you see here is an image, in, is, uh, an image uh, which, which I have to thank ESA, the European Space Agency, for, uh, for this, and also to acknowledge ATG Media Lab for uh, supplying the image. You can find it for sure on the official website, but uh, that's their image, and uh, actually uh, reports the spacecraft and the way it, uh, it is quite clear how it is supplied with electrical power, thanks to solar arrays. But uh, as you can see, there are some antennas uh, in different directions. Uh, there are dipole or multiple antennas, and there, uh, most of them are uh, connected to scientific uh, instruments. So uh, all in particular, they have to uh, capture the electromagnetic spectrum, particularly the, yeah, the, the electromagnetic and also the magnetic one, uh, in order to uh, quantify the variation in this term, in order to observe what's happening on the surface and also below the surface of the icy moons, which will be observed. So that's all for today. Save the date. Actually, we are already into it. August 19 and also August 20. So between today and tomorrow for the flyby, and uh, let me know if you can see the spacecraft from the surface uh, and also let me know if you appreciated these uh, updates. Uh, I would like to, uh, to let you know that I've, uh, I've organized the whole thing uh, in a hurry. So let me know if you appreciate this thing. Write down in the comments, subscribe and also share this channel with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.